Quick Dick McDick coming to you from Saskatchewan with a language warning because it's time for our yearly episode of Thoughts from the Gabbing Barn. April 1st, so yet again, here we are with these people kind running our government, and here in Canada, our carbon tax is going up 23% from 65 bucks a ton to 80 bucks a ton. I've done a mess of videos on the carbon tax and how it increases the cost of absolutely everything we buy here in Canada. Not only that, but it puts Canadian businesses and farms at a market disadvantage globally and does absolutely nothing to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Because Canada's greenhouse gas emissions are literally a drop of piss in a 20 liter pail of water. That's a five gallon bucket if you don't speak metric. But for some reason, there's still this group of federal MPs and their cultish followers that running around using the talking point that the carbon tax is good because eight out of 10 households get back more than they pay. So I'm just curious, are you people counting the tents that a bunch of Canadians now have to live in after eight years of Justin Trudeau as a household? Or like, how do they get more carbon tax back than they pay on their little propane bottles that they have to use to heat their single wall Coleman bungalows? The only Canadians that get back more than they pay are the ones that aren't paying for anything. Unfortunately, they're the poor bastards that have to line up for a food bank after Canada's had Justin and his minions for the last eight years. Eight out of ten households get back more than they pay. What a load of shit. Even the parliamentary budget officer says that's bullshit. But why would these people kind of listen to a budget officer? Budget. They don't know what that is. Isn't that the thing that the Prince of Pretty Sock says balances itself? And the budget will balance itself. The budget. Isn't that the thing that they have a competition with each other every year to just see how much farther they can plunge Canada into debt? A budget officer? Why would you listen to somebody like that? Somebody that's hired to give fiscal and economic analysis on the country of Canada? And he actually comes up with the calculations that more families are actually worse off than they are with the carbon tax? Well, why would you listen to somebody like that? I mean, that completely destroys your only fucking talking point. Who in the fuck actually believes these rocket scientists running a government with a $1.25 trillion deficit that they actually know how to make money with your money? The only people that make money off this federal government are the ones that actually work for them and then double back as a contractor and build them twice. Oh no, I guess there's another kind. There's those ones that work at CRA that are busy fucking everybody over, stealing money from you while they audit you to make sure that you're being honest with your money too, because that makes sense, right? <laughs> there are actually people out there that believe you get back more than you pay. And not only that, but our current government is capable of solving pollution with a tax. Take good old Harry Dunn on TikTok here, for example. I fucking hate the carbon tax. Yeah, me too. I hate it. You see these coveralls? Oh, Kenworth, Kenworth there's a good like, start. We, we hate the carbon tax over here. But I hate it even more because if you want to read about it, you can't just search carbon tax. You have to read the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. Oh, okay, yes, here we are TikToking in front of a bunch of screenshotted articles. This ought to be really good. And you know what you learn after reading a political science degree's worth of legislation? That even with the huge increase coming in, I only pay about an extra 14 cents a liter at the gas pump. Okay, actually, it's going to be 17 cents a liter on gasoline and 21 cents a liter on diesel. But I mean, who cares about actual numbers and facts, right? Which for me personally is going to work out to around an extra $290 a year in expenses. You mean 353.60 if you're burning 40 liters a week. But yeah, whatever, please go on. But federally, I'm looking at them giving me an extra $1,500 back. I'm actually making money. Well, here's the thing, Harry. You actually only added your personal gasoline cost. You forgot to add the cost of the carbon tax on natural gas and electricity. Of course, all the transitory effects that the carbon tax has on absolutely everything you buy in grocery stores, hardware stores that's trucked all across Canada. Hey, you're driving a truck, actually. Why don't you add an invoice from your employer that would show the cost that they bill to customers? I'll bet you there's a line item built into it that's got some sort of charge built in to protect them from the cost of fuel that's increased by the carbon tax well you wouldn't want to do that because then all of a sudden your fucking argument would collapse on itself wouldn't it's it like the farmers they're gonna pay through the nose trying to run all their equipment no they're exempt so if you produce food you don't pay carbon tax on fuel or heating okay i'll take harry has no fucking idea what he's talking about for 400 please alex 
Farm delivered Mark diesel and gasoline are the only two fuels that are exempt on a farm from the carbon tax. The rest of it we pay on. Propane and natural gas used for drying grain, heating shops and barns. And don't forget, you know, hog producers, chicken producers that actually have to heat their barns so their livestock doesn't die when it hits minus 30 that are sometimes susceptible to a $250,000 a year carbon tax charge on their barns. Costs us tens of thousands of dollars to dry our grain. We have to pay carbon tax on any of the machinery that we buy that's built here in Canada that manufacturers have built into it. We also have to pay carbon tax on the transportation of commercial goods to and from our farm if we don't do it ourselves. And then once we harvest our grain and dry and pay a carbon tax on that, once it hits the train to go to the fuck ships at port we got to pay carbon tax on that too but hey don't let me get in the way of you there harry you're standing in front of a screenshot on tiktok telling everybody how fucking smart you are please continue i get money back farmers and fisheries are exempt there's a scaling system for major industries like it it just it's so good congratulations harry you're a fucking genius <laughs> Anyways, let's move on from Carl because he obviously has no fucking idea what he's talking about. And let's bring up our next contestant. Ugh. This is why it's important to do research and not take what conservative premiers and the leader of the opposition say about the carbon tax. Oh, this isn't going to be painful at all. Where have I heard this voice before? Um, uh, I'll have a, um, a large popcorn, no butter, no oil, dry air pumps with a Diet Coke. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, please continue, Fran. The carbon tax first started in 2007, oh, long before Justin too. Trudeau was prime minister. It was actually Stephen Harper. Okay, so here we have an unapologetic Trudeau supporter, and the first rule of being a Trudeau supporter is when anything comes up, blame Stephen Harper. A conservative that put in the carbon tax cap and trade system still a terrible and stupid system but please go on you know what justin trudeau did do yes he introduced a consumer-based carbon tax Can somebody please email friend the difference between a cap and trade system and a consumer-based carbon tax please somebody started to give fucking rebates back to people in 2019 much less than you pay into it but please go on now what's the point of the carbon tax it's akin to a sin tax you know how you pay extra tax on things like liquor and cigarettes so if you choose to imbibe in those things, you're going to pay extra. Yes, I don't like it, but I know what you're talking about. They just raised that fucking tax too. I know, I don't like it either. It's the same thing with the carbon tax. Because the carbon tax is an incentive to use less carbon. Holy fuck, you people. Do you understand the difference between these items? I can live without booze and cigarettes. But you know what I can't live without? Natural gas to heat my home in the wintertime when it's minus 30. They're nowhere near the same thing. Do you people hear yourselves talking? So in Alberta, for instance, we're getting the highest amount of rebate. And for the large majority of people, they will be getting back in rebates far more than they're paying out in carbon tax. Actually, the parliamentary budget officer estimates that Alberta is actually going to be the most expensive place. It's going to cost you an extra $911 a household in 23-24, but don't let that get in the way of your little argument here. Please continue. Maybe you need to be mad at the conservatives who actually lobby for oil and gas and hobnob with Galen Weston. Oh, yeah, the evil corporations and Loblaws and Galen Weston. I don't like him either, but I can't remember who it was that gave them a $12 million grant for refrigeration retrofit. Who was that again? Who was hobnobbing with Galen Weston and Loblaws there? Oh, they're the evil corporations, right? Yeah, and then your fearless leader. Yeah, okay, yeah, but please continue. I think you all should take a step back. Thank Justin Trudeau for giving us a check four times a year. Yes, for anybody that's wondering, this is what it looks like when a Justin Trudeau diehard supporter is talking about their supreme leader. Well, Val, we are in the presence of genius here. Oh. My only goal is that someday I be as confident and brilliant and sophisticated as that man. Hey, listen, I'm going to stop there because I'm not going to sit here and rape your ears with this nonsense that these people are spewing. If you want to go watch the whole video in its entirety, you can go find these people kind on TikTok. $8.2 billion collected in carbon tax in 2023, and the feds are still actually holding $2.5 billion of it in their purse that they haven't returned back to anybody that's entitled to it. The feds, well, hey Blue Ball, generated $486 million in GST revenue off of the carbon tax last year alone. That's right, a tax on a tax. And they employ 465 people in the federal government to administer this program at a cost of about $83 million that has no tangible way of knowing 
whether it actually contributes to lower carbon emissions or not. I can't believe that there's people out there that not only think that if we pay the government a tax for using energy, not only will they give us more money back than we gave to them, but somehow they will be able to fix the climate with it. There's a government that spent $60 million trying to build an app that completely failed. And we think that we can pay them and they will somehow fix global emissions? This is making my blood pressure go up. You know what else is going up? Politicians' wages. Oh yeah, not only in Saskatchewan here that our MLAs all get a raise on April 1st, but all the feds are getting a raise too. Backbenchers, eight grand. Ministers, at least 12 grand. And the Sultan of Sparkle Socks himself getting an extra 16 grand, making them the second highest paid politicians in the world. I just can't believe that we live in a country where the federal government has mismanaged absolutely every portfolio that it has fucking touched. We have Canadians that can't afford a home, they can barely afford to eat, and they can't get proper health care. And we have federal politicians that are giving themselves a raise for a job well done. That would be like me having a pile of 300 dead calf carcasses just outside of the calving barn, rotting, feeding the coyotes, plunging the farm 50% farther into debt over the next coming year, and then patting myself on the back and giving myself a raise, telling myself, haven't I just done a great fucking job? And like, I'm just curious how many conservative politicians that have been running around bitching about how the CBC takes taxpayers' dollars and then pays it in executive bonuses to a business that's completely failing. Are you all taking your pay raises? Because I'd say you've pretty much been failing at your fucking job here lately just as bad as the liberals too. I feel like Bill fucking Murray waking up in the same nightmare every day, except instead of it being Groundhog's Day, it's April Fool's Day. Huh. Wake up, rise and shine, time to get out of it. You pay more tax and we get a pay raise day. So, unfortunately, if you're in the camp that believes this is all about the environment and that we get back more than we pay, not only did Adam von Kuberton admit on public TV that this is a wealth redistribution mechanism. Change. So which they is go. this? Is it income redistribution or is it reducing emissions? Well, it's doing both, quite frankly. But I'm going to leave you with the ending quote of what Minister Jonathan Wilkinson said on the Evan Bray show here not that long ago in Saskatchewan. Like, regulation is more expensive than a carbon price, and just doing it through spending is more expensive than a carbon price. And at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer who pays. So, and at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer who pays. So, and at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer who pays. So, you heard it there. It's all on the taxpayer. But don't worry, we get back more than we pay, and it's all about the environment. Fucking crooks. This is Quick Dick McDick signing off, reminding you there's nothing more sickening than a guy who says he's got your backs, and then on the same day he gives himself a raise, he cranks up your carbon tax. Catch you next time.